So I'm going to um, uh, uh, click on a simple example. Um, uh, let me know if, if you can hear it. So this is the platform. Uh, uh, yeah, I can Great. Uh, so this is all peer scripts, um, making this, making this music happen. Uh, so we'll be doing several musical examples. This is a, 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 um, a Greek artist uh, a stuff, um, but I'm showing it off because it's, it's kind of a nice example, um, but just kind of a, a sanity check uh, of what's going on. Um, so this is WAGS. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fistful of Como ads uh, on the inside, but uh, on the outside, you just get music like that. Um, here's another example by an artist named uh, Ben Burns. Which is kind of a little bit more lo-fi and, and a little crazier sounding. Um, sounds like glitchy techno, which is super fun, in my opinion. Uh, so there you go. Um, so th that uh, that is the platform. Uh, runs on Comonads, um, but I wanted to give you uh, a sense of like sort of what it is. It's an in-browser DAW, and it's what we're going to be using for a jam session uh, later today in the conference. Um, so uh, um, where does it live on GitHub? So on GitHub, um, it lives in uh, this library, which is called PureScript Wags. Uh, you're all uh, free to go, clone it, um, uh, play uh, play around with it. Um, uh, there's many examples uh, of it online, and maybe <laughs> the best place to find the examples is in uh, GitHub.io, mikesall.github.io slash wagsy, um, where there's sort of all sorts of uh, um, uh, fun examples. Like here's a, a delay and flange line um, uh, that uh, Algeria, Algeria, kind of creates a Algeria, 80s or Algeria, Game of Thrones uh, sound spooky spooky voice um, all in the browser. So uh, uh, that's that. Um, and now uh, kind of now that you see sort of what what the project is uh, is an in browser DAW. Uh, powered by PureScript, um, I'd like to now go to the Comonad side, kind of really digging deep in and saying, um, we're talking about what problem uh, I needed to solve. So before I even get into what a Comonad is, uh, I'd like to talk about what problem I needed to solve. Um, so the problem I needed to solve at first when I started building WAGs uh, is, uh, it was twofold. Um, one is that you need music to come out, like you, you just, uh, the sound has to escape. Um, and then two, uh, you need to sort of anticipate um, what's going to happen in the future, um, meaning if anything could happen uh, in the future, then it just gets too uh, computationally, um, uh, it just takes too much computation, uh, meaning that you have to have a runtime that could sort of anticipate anything. It would be like in baseball, uh, if you ask your center fielder to, to play that entire field, um, it's just not going to work. They'll be able to play it up to a certain point. Uh, but but not uh, they're not going to be able to uh, run um, to the pitcher's mound or, or catch a ball where the catcher is supposed to be. So you can't demand that of a runtime, and certainly not a browser. Um, so you need to be in, able to sort of anticipate the possible moves. So getting music out and anticipating the possible moves, um, and that's not a unique problem in music at all. In fact, that's sort of the most common problem. So I have this uh, example of uh, Oscar Peterson, great jazz musician, um, and if you look at him playing, uh, there's two things that are happening. There's music that's coming out. Um, but uh, what he's doing all the time is uh, anticipating subtly and within milliseconds the next thing that he's going to pl uh, play, uh, meaning it doesn't come out completely spontaneously. It's based on the key um, and based on uh, the, the uh, style of the music, which in this case um, is, a, is the blues. Um, so there you go. It's a fundamentally musical problem of, of getting something out, which Oscar Peterson is doing there through the piano, and anticipating what can happen next within a certain realm of bounds. So like Oscar Peterson is gonna do certain things, but he's not gonna like um, uh, smash the piano or, or, or something completely outside of bounds, uh, which, which would be uh, too complex for the runtime of, of that video. So, but within those bounds, uh, it's, it's ingenious, of course. And that, that is the art of uh, not just my musical project, but any musical project. Um, so that's the problem that I have to solve. How do I get sound out and how do I anticipate into the future um, uh, what, what the sound needs to be? Um, so, uh, in order to solve that problem, I went to Comonads, and now um, what I would like to do, um, I have so I have a uh, PureConf 2022, which is on my GitHub. Uh, you are more than welcome to, to clone it. It's Mike Saul slash PureHub uh, PureConf 2022. I'm going to be pushing it as I live code it, um, uh, but but uh, there you go. You could, you could uh, uh, see the repo at, at the at the very least clone it at the end. So um, let's encapsulate those problems that I want to solve in code. Um, so. Uh, the first problem that we have 
uh, is we have some type of context. I'm going to call my context <laughs> W. Uh, the context there is like Oscar Peterson's jazz trio, right? So like jazz trio. And then um, inside the context is a sound, and I'm just going to call the sound A for the time being. So I need to get a sound out of my jazz trio. I need to get an A out of a W. So get a sound out of my trio, get an A out of my W. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is Oscar Peterson thinking slightly in advance. What am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? What am I going to do next? So I uh, have on my jazz trio, I'm imagining my trio making a sound um, at, at some point uh, in the future. And then I need uh, that point in the future. So then get that point in the future. And you see GitHub uh, Copilot is trying to fill it in for me and it's, it's doing a pretty good job actually. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. So uh, anyway, I digress. So um, now uh, let's do it with type. So we have um, W, A, actually let's do both of these types. So uh, the first one is simple. We have W, A, a jazz trio with a sound inside of it. And we're just gonna get the sound. Um, so at the end, if you close your eyes, you don't see the jazz trio anymore, but you hear the sound. So, so kind of the, the, the uh, group that's producing it fades away and you just have the trace of the artifact. So W, A to A. Um, and I'm going to call this, um, uh, oh, what am I going to call this? Uh, extract. I'm going to call it extract the sound. Um, and now uh, I'm going to create something called expand. Let me use a similar signature. So I'm going to say W, A. Uh, I'm going to start with a uh, uh, co-monad, um, or actually I haven't called these co-monads yet, sorry. Um, so I'm going to start with my WA, my jazz trio, that's slightly better. And then um, I'm going to have the function where I'm imagining the future. So here's my jazz trio playing in the future, and uh, we, we produce a sound, which, which is exactly the same as this extract function in terms of uh, its, its signature. So I'm imagining the future, what it's going to be like, and then when I get there, here's the future. So I need to be able to like fast forward to it and actually use that, meaning that if I'm imagining the future, it sort of doesn't... I mean, it's, if I'm imagining the, what, what I'm going to do with my jazz trio and then they turn the lights out and kick the audience out, it sort of doesn't make sense. There was no point in, in doing that imagination. So at the very least, I need to get something out that is going to be the future um, that I could then call extract on. So we have these two uh, very musical operations, extract um, and expand, uh, that uh, Oscar Peterson is using. Um, so uh, these two operations now to kind of uh, pull, pull off the veil, are the two operations that are the bread and butter operations of a co-monad, extract and expand. Um, and if you're familiar with using monads, and there were two talks about monads um, uh, already in, in uh, this conference, um, and I'm sure they'll come up elsewhere. So we're not gonna use them in my, my presentation. Uh, this might look familiar to you. And it's because they're what uh, people call in, in fancy talk, uh, the categorical dual of uh, monad. So um, let's look at a monadic function. So I'm gonna say extract is from a co-monad and expand is from a co-monad. And now let's look at the monad version. So the monad version of extractor, when I say version, I mean, this is a categorical dual, so we're flipping it around. It's called pure or in Haskell speak, return, if you're more comfortable with Haskell, and this is a monad. So um, category theory, the reason that it's one of my favorite branches of uh, mathematics is, is because um, it feels very playful. You can like flip stuff around and, and you get sort of something for free. And it's the same thing here. So I'm gonna flip around extract, I get pure for free. Usually people call it M, uh, MA, but you call it sort of whatever you want. Um, and expand, I'm going to flip it around uh, and I'm going to get something called bind monad for free. And uh, both Jordan and James talked about bind. So here I'll use M again, M A, A, M A, M A. So um, uh, my, my Oscar Peterson uh, co monad uh, terms, their categorical duels are, are monadic at, at a conceptual level. Uh, level. Um, uh, so why is it called co? Because in category theory, uh, when you flip around the arrows, co is a popular term to use. So uh, if you've heard of a product, um, which is uh, two things happening simultaneously, um, a sum term uh, is also called a co-product. So it's two things um, uh, that happen in either or setup. And in general, in category theory, when you want to flip something around, you call it uh, co that. Um, and perhaps if you call it co-co, then you get the original, uh, although I've never uh, tried. So, so uh, perhaps that doesn't communicate that idea, but there you go. So um, now what I would like to do is build a simple co-monad. Um, and then we're going to look at how co-monads actually power the musical examples um, uh, that, that you just heard in the same way that they power Oscar Peterson's jazz trio. So uh, we are, um, uh, the first, what I would like to create is a co-monad um, that I'm going to call my co-free. So I'll get into what co-free means in a second, but um, because we're going to be working with something called co-free co-monads, I'd like to start 
um, with that right away. So I'm going to create new type my cofree, um, and I'm going to say uh, that there's going to be a functor in there, and it's just a sort of arbitrary type constructor. Um, wow, it's actually filling it in something that's almost correct, but it's not not quite that. Uh, and then uh, type. So this um, the the comonad it's going to be my cofree f. Uh, that's going to be our W and then A which will just be this A. So I'll say my co-free. And now I'm going to use um, my musical term. So I'm going to say playing now, like what, what, is, what is Oscar playing now? It's going to be A. Um, and then say in the future, I'm going to be playing F of my co-free. F of A. So um, if you stare hard enough uh, at this function um, and you're, you're used to a uh, uh, non-lazy language strict evaluation um, like peer script, uh, immediately um, it, it should sort of freak you out in, in all the right ways because we have uh, this, this uh, recursively defined um, function, meaning that in order to create this thing, we need to pass it in the future, which is this thing, and we can wrap it in an F. Um, but if uh, the F that we're wrapping it in doesn't have any sort of delayed execution, then we're going to blow up our stack because um, uh, my co-free can only be defined in terms of itself. So we're going to need some sort of infinite um, uh, type constructor. Uh, and that's no fun. So um, to, to, to make this a little bit more safe, there's a few ways to do it. But the way that I'm going to do it for now uh, is just to give it a dummy unit value. Um, let me see if I've imported the prelude I have. So um, here, I'm going to say unit to that, which means that we're going to be able to defer its construction so we don't sort of blow up um, uh, uh, the stack. Um, so uh, now that uh, I can do that, um, let's uh, 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 create a functor instance for it, which we're going to have to do before we create um, our, our uh, uh, comonad. So I'm going to actually, I could even just derive the functor. So derive um, uh, instance functor my co-free, I'll just say my co-free f, uh, sorry, functor my co-free f. Um, so that's, uh, looks like it uh, um, doesn't want to do it uh, because of course f needs to be a functor, functor f, there you go. Um, okay, so uh, that, that's just a pure script compiler uh, defining it, what it's going to do. Um, if we wrote it up by hand, it's just called map on this, um, and then it's going to call map on that um, and and uh, map on that again. It will, it will call map thrice actually, map once on the function, uh, map on this, map on that. In fact, uh, just to, um, uh, let, let's let's write it out. Whoa, this is, this is like, it's, uh, it's it's crazy, isn't it? Um, so we have F, a uh, micro free, and we're gonna say uh, playing now and in the future. Um, and we're gonna say, now we'll just reconstruct it micro free um, and we'll say playing now equals f of playing now, which it got right, good. Um, and then here uh, we're going to want map over the function, map over the functor, which is this f, um, and then map over this. Um, and then uh, from there uh, we're going to say f in the future. Um, and it is uh, uh, flipping out. Um, uh, for, for uh, reasons that I'm uh, not um, f uh, not not quite sure of um, uh, it's not uh, yeah sure 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 there you go um, it's because I used the equal syntax sorry I was uh, thinking thinking in a different language uh, so there you go Th that, that um, if we had to write it out by hand and we'll keep it that way um, just so you could build the intuition of, of what the functor looks like so it, it's mapping over the function over uh, this f and then over this map is being called recursively. So this map um, is is uh, this map. Um, there you go. So um, uh, now uh, that we have this functor, we're able to um, define. Uh, we're able to turn it into a comonad. Um, so uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to flip back to the high level um, and show you an example of the the sound that that makes. Meaning that once we've turned this structure into a comonad, um, uh, what what that uh, affords for us. So um, I'm going to go uh, again, uh, I'm going to create an instance. So instance extend my co-free and I'm going to say uh, extend my co-free f where extend equals, and remember our, our uh, extend here is wa then this function. And if we click through 
to extend, um, let's, let's uh, import it, go to definition. Uh, my uh, uh, VS Code plugin is um, uh, not, uh, uh, for some reason doesn't want to go to the definition, but, but that's absolutely fine. So we're going to take this here, um, we're going to uh, put that there. We have this function, I'm just going to put a type hole um, for, for uh, the, the time being. So extend actually, uh, if, if I understand correctly, it starts uh, with this um, function. So we have to uh, flip the order, um, which we will. Um, there you go. And we need a functor for F, which we will. And now we have our type hole. So we need to get another myco free out of it. Um, <laughs> so let's see if we can make it. So we will again, start with this myco free. Uh, so we're gonna make it look uh, quite similar. So um, this uh, uh, F um, here, I'm gonna say MCF for the whole myco free. So I'm gonna say playing now, is going to be this f of mcf because this function gets us an a and we need the a in there. So um, we're going to apply it. Um, and then in the future, um, I'm going to say, so we have unit. So we, we can just kind of throw that away. Um, we have, uh, a, we're going to map over uh, because we have this functor instance in here. So we can map over um, uh, this functor. So we're going to say map over in the future. And what are we gonna map over it? Well, extend myco free. Um, so we're gonna say extend extend, and we need to import that. An infinite, uh, yeah, there you go. So um, we need uh, to, to wrap it now. Um, in in uh, the the right type, so probably a better way to do that um, would be map. So map map um, extend myco free f. Um, let's see if that works. That works. Um, so we don't even use this plane now. We can just get rid of it. Um, okay. So that's extend. So again, what we've done. Uh, is we've taken um, uh, this function, applied it to myco free, so we get something out of it. And in the future, we're going to get something out of it as well. Um, for those that have worked with go free comonads, uh, this is called redecoration, essentially. So we're redecorating uh, the, the um, future with uh, this function um, uh, that we kind of kick the can down all the way uh, the line. So it, it sort of one thing that's worth saying is if we redecorate too much, then we might create a performance issue because we're applying function on top of a function on top of a function on top of a function. But for one offs, um, it, it's absolutely fine. So again, this is to go back to our Oscar Peterson example and my example. Uh, this is taking a function that could uh, um, modify the future somehow, modifying it. And then on a rainy day, we check it out and, and uh, we actually use it. Um, and then extract. So instance uh, comonad my co free functor f comonad my co free f where um so uh, we said that it's going to be called extract um and we have playing now and it's wow github copilot just totally got that right so we just extract uh, playing now and we're playing now um so uh that is uh the music um that was coming out of oscar's fingers and that's coming out of uh wags uh, dot dot fm um so uh this is the setup but concretely um, I've kind of done this low level implementation. I've showed high level um, uh, sort of what, what, the, um, uh, what the music is, but now I would like to uh, link the two together um, so you can see uh, quite concretely um, how this is used uh, actually in a, in a very granular way um, to create sound. And then kind of I'll, I'll uh, um, uh, conclude by talking about what the performance characteristics are of it uh, before I get into the Q and A. So, um, let's go back into an example. And the example I have uh, here for it um, is this Bach fugue. So I'll, I'll play it um, for y'all so you can hear it. And I have a synth, custom synth. So the synth sounds kind of weird because I have this high pass filter uh, going up and down on it. I can make the high pass filter a little faster and it'll sound really wacky in kind of a maybe fun, maybe not way. Yeah, let me slow it down a little bit so we can really hear it. Yeah. 
So there you go. Um, it's a Bach fugue. Uh, so uh, I should say that um, the system is quite fast. So if I start it again uh, and I speed it up to something faster, it, it should just work. So this sort of this will double the speed of what you just heard. It'll sound kind of crazy, but but the co-free co monad shouldn't fail us. If it does, I'll be sad. Um, Whoa, well, that is twice as fast. There you go, and there's basically no 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 clicks or, or um, anything like that. So, but we'll bring it. Bach is wrong in this page, so we'll bring it back to that. So, how wh where is the co-free co monad in there, um, breather? Where is the co monad in there? How, how is that? Um, how, how is that making it musical? So um, what I'm gonna do is dive into the definitions of one of these particular functions. So the, the uh, WAGS entirely runs on co-free commonads. It's like, uh, th that, that is the underlying abstraction um, that, that makes the whole entire thing work. Everything works that way. Um, uh, every time sound comes out of the loudspeaker, it's because uh, it's using um, extract on something at some level. Um, and I've written some custom, uh, uh, things that are not uh, co-free co-monads, but just other types of uh, co-monads, but uh, just to make it a bit more performant. But in general, that's what's going on. So let's um, dive into this function, make piecewise. Let's look at what it's doing uh, here on this page. And then I'm gonna go to the definition and link it all the way back to co-free co So what make piecewise is doing here, um, I'm gonna make the piece a little bit slower so we can hear it. It's creating a piecewise, um, uh, envelope. So it's starting at a volume of zero, then at 0 0.11 seconds going up to a volume of 0 0.4, then falling down to a volume of one again at 0 0.2 seconds and at 0 0.3 goes to zero. So it creates this boom that's going to sound like sort of a key press in our little synth. I've slowed it down so you can hear dum, 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 dum. If we want to smear it out over time a little bit, um, we can change it. And we'll hear it smear. And now we can bring it back to something a little bit more crisp. And we'll hear that. So it's creating this piecewise uh, function of time. Um, uh, how is it uh, able to do that? How is it able to know sort of what the next value is and what value we want now coming into the browser? How is it able to extract that? value, if my choice of terms extract is, is of course on purpose, it's because it uses the function uh, extract. So let's go to the definition of, of make piecewise, which I have pulled up here. Um, and you see that make piecewise, uh, it takes this non-empty list, which is the envelope that I showed you and has this thing called the audio parameter f function of time. So audio parameter function of time uh, takes the current time, what it is and how much headroom, how much look ahead um, and gives us um, an uh, audio parameter um, uh, under the hood. So, um, and then audio parameter is, uh, um, uh, all that an audio parameter is, is it's a, uh, uh, it's the value that we want at a given time. And then uh, the, um, the offset in case it's something that's precisely timed. Uh, for example, if the audio clock falls now, but we would need an attack to happen slightly after, uh, we could set that as well in an audio parameter. And actually, let me find a slightly better um, uh, definition because I'm realizing now uh, that that it um, uh, that this one might not uh, uh, show common ads in, in uh, the, the way that I would sort of like to, but this one definitely does. Um, uh, uh, sorry, I opened up the wrong definition file. So this piece twice, so time headroom, the time, and it spits out um, a co-free co-monad where the functor is this function. So one really important thing to remember is that uh, a function from A to B has a functor instance, the function A. Um, so function A is a functor. So here, a function of time is a functor. Uh, so we have this co-free in the exact same way I set it up in my co-free here. Um, my cofree f of a here cofree this is our f function of time and a is the audio parameter this is what it's spitting out so at time zero if we go back to our um, uh, our Bach example uh, at time zero our uh, our cofree comonad spits out this value of zero um, at the next time uh, it will uh, interpolate between zero and four and spit out a value. And um, one question uh, that you might ask is, why not just take a giant structure and constantly uh, kind of map over that structure and do 
um, interpolation, meaning that why do you need to sort of store the value in its some um, uh, intermediary state? The reason is that once uh, things get uh, very long, it's inefficient to do some sort of map or lookup table uh, uh, method. And one way that we can see that um, that's sort of self-evident is the actual score of this. So let me start uh, the, the piece again. Uh, so you can listen to it. So this is the score. Um, the score, these are all the notes and this is where they fall in time. Uh, this time is quantized by this very small factor and that's what speeds it up and, and makes it quite fast. So what if we treated this list uh, or this non-empty array as a lookup table um, instead of treating it like uh, um, a co-free uh, co-monad that spits out the next value over time. So here, because under the hood, I transform it. Uh, so. In, let me back up. In addition to my envelope being a co-free comonad, my score here is also transformed into a co-free comonad because I said the whole thing runs on co-free comonad. So here we're extracting the next value. We're extracting um, this note. And then as soon as this note's done, we extract this note in time. And then we extract this note in time. And then we extract this note and so forth and so on all the way down the piece. And when it ends, we just uh, recycle and extract them again. So what if we didn't do it that way? What if instead of extracting, um, we had some sort of lookup table? Well, the naive way to do that would be to like, to, to cycle through this list, do some sort of filter. And when we get to the next value, um, uh, we, we use it, which is fine in the beginning of the piece, but now scroll, 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 because this piece is thousands of notes. Let's imagine that we're five minutes into the piece and all of a sudden we're looking over a data structure that contains 7,000 entries to find the next note to play, the thing would crash, meaning that the piece would start off okay, but 30 seconds into it, it just wouldn't work in the browser anymore because you're going over this array. Now there are ways to mitigate that, of course. We could transform our array into a map and, and use um, the time as, as keys, at which point it would have um, a logarithmic performance instead of uh, that uh, awful linear performance that I talked about. But it still wouldn't be great because we would still have to have this map traversal every single time we wanted to get out a note. Um, whereas uh, the Comonad approach is basically 01, meaning that as soon as we finish this note, we call extract on it. And then we call extend to get our next co-free comonad. Uh, and what's going to be in our next co-free comonad is going to be this note. So we call extract on that. That's blazingly fast compared to some type of traversal. And again, going back to, to Oscar Peterson and our and our YouTube video, um, it, I, you know, I'm, I'm not, uh, I, I can't claim to know what was going on in his brain when he was doing that improvisation. But he was playing this note, um, and then somewhere at, at some uh, place, he's lining up either the next note or potentially what the next notes could be. It could be one of several things to be based on uh, the performance of another musician or his mood or you know, lots of stuff. Um, and uh, so you're lining it up, which is that uh, extend operation that I was talking about. And the same thing is going on here. We're extracting this value and then we're using a comonet to extend this value. So we've seen this now happen on two levels of music. We've seen extract and extend work on a piecewise envelope generator, meaning that it's generating the individual envelope that's applied to a single note. And we've seen it work on our score, meaning that it's generating the next note that's gonna be used in a score. And the beautiful thing about music for me, at least, is that it's sort of like people say that a burrito, a monad is a burrito all the way down. I feel like music is a co-monad all the way up, meaning that you could start from envelopes, then get to a level of a score, and then get to a level of an entire piece or an entire audiograph. And now I would like to bring in the, uh, the name of this package and why it's named as such. So it's called PureScript WAGS, why WAGS? Web audiographs as a stream. Meaning that if you can take a, um, a comonad, uh, and stream it at the small level, can the comonet represent the entire audiograph? And the answer, I wouldn't ask the question, of course, if I didn't already know the answer, uh, which is yes. So I'm going to open up the Brave browser, or actually I don't, um, I don't have it here, but let me install um, really quickly a, a, um, a Chrome extension. Uh, I'm going to say Audion um, because I, uh, so Web Audiograph Visualizer, um, or let's say Chrome web store um because this uh just to kind of show the point so audion um uh let me install this really quick this is made by the google chrome team i uninstalled it because its performance is awful and didn't think i would use it uh, in this in, uh, in this presentation but um there you go what uh it's asking me to do all, all sorts of stuff but let me uh <laughs> that that's that's nice um so let me, let me go back to this um and hopefully this will have audion uh, installed in it, um, and I will uh, be able to show you what I'd like to show you. So my claim is that the whole web audiograph is a Chrome stream. Um, uh, let's see if that's the case. So I'm going to open up uh, Audion in here. 
Uh, it looks like it didn't uh, install. That's unfortunate. Let, let me uh, open up audio in, in here. There we go. Uh, I'll turn it on, manage extensions. Um, and it looks like Audion is on. So what Audion is going to be um, is a, uh, a tool in our inspect browser. Um, and we uh, see this web audio pane. I'm going to reload this. And now I'm going to press play. And my claim is that the whole web audio graph, meaning the whole experience that you're listening to right now, is a stream powered by Comonads. But don't take my word for it. Look at the visualization, and you'll see exactly what's happening under the hood. So it's a little slow because it's, it's uh, drawing it. But I'm going to press stop. This graph that you see on the right side of my screen is the Comonad ejecting a full web audio graph uh, 60 times a second. So I'll press stop. And you see, uh, sorry, when it's actually when it stops, it, it doesn't hold the state. So that's kind of unfortunate. So I'll narrate it. But you see this audio buffer source, these gain filters. Um, it's not updating fast enough, but you see that bi quad filter in there. This is updating 60 times a second actually within the browser, meaning that it's taking a full web audio graph with filters, oscillators, the whole nine yards. Um, it's, extra it's uh, extracting the one that's now and then extending into the future what it will be in the future. So uh, my claim uh, was that an individual uh, piecewise function can be powered by a Comonet, a score can be powered by a Comonet, and now we've gone all the way up um, to the entire musical experience, the web audio graph. The graphs are extracted uh, in time uh, at the sampling rate. Uh, just like Oscar Peterson is extracting notes from his fingers. So the uh, I come back to this metaphor a lot, but I think it's so powerful um, because mu music functions that way, any sort of UI uh, functions that way as well. So so why not use components? And kind of the thing I'd like to uh, close with before we get into the um, Q&A, and I'm happy to answer really any questions about it, is um, the, uh, the, the um, uh, other folks uh, that have looked at components uh, use uh, interesting terms about it. And I'm reminded of one that uh, Phil Freeman, uh, the creator of PureScript used, which is Comonads or the future. Um, and he met it uh, in, in kind of the prophetic way that it sounds, um, that the future of programming is Comonads, which I personally believe as well. But he also meant it in this, um, as a pun, Comonads are the future, meaning Comonads line up what happens in the future. And that's the whole entire point um, uh, of using them. It also, they line up uh, the present, uh, uh, as we saw with the extract operation. Uh, so I do believe that Comonads are uh, the future, at least it's the future of my future, because I'm, I'm all in on this tool that I'm making and, and kind of uh, diffusing it uh, around the world uh, to musicians uh, that jam with me on it and then make stuff with it. So um, Comonads are certainly my future, uh, because it's how I'm building my business. But it's, it's also a, a great way to extract the uh, the future of an, an audio state in a really cheap, cheap computation efficient way. So aside from when I was drawing that graph and that you heard some hiccups, I mean, you don't hear uh, any hiccups when you're using Comonads because it's O1 looked up, it's just the next thing that's going to happen. So if you structure your whole entire experience that way, um, then you get those performance characteristics um, compared to a more naive um, implementation. So uh, to summarize, if you're um, at all building any type of uh, rendering engine, be it an audio rendering engine like I am, or it could be a canvas-based rendering engine or even um, some type of web application you want to experiment with a different UI framework, Comonads are a great, great, great way to power um, what you're doing. Uh, it's a fantastic abstraction that from a theoretical um, and aesthetic point of view is very much linked uh, to some of the most beautiful performative arts, including music, um, uh, including Oscar Peterson and many others, of course. So thank you very much uh, for um, uh, for checking them out. I'll stop the share and maybe uh, one, one thing that we could do now um, is uh, 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 take any questions about it. So I'm looking at the um, uh, the um, since we're uh, there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I think yeah, Copilot thinks we're in Haskell. Um, uh, every reader is a co-author. <laughs> That's great. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so synthwave Beethoven, yes. Oh, the envelope also. So yeah, thank you very much. Why is WAGS a graph or why is web audio a graph? So maybe I'll start with that um, and then I can kind of go, go through one by one. Um, so, so apologies if I don't get to your uh, question uh, right away um, or re-ask it if I, if I don't see it, but I'll start with James Collier. And then if you had a question uh, beforehand, um, uh, please let me know. So why is uh, WAGS a graph or why is web audio a graph? Um, so let's look at, um, so at an intermediary level, uh, what I would like to do um, is turn on my screen share again and look at um, a, a way that constructs it uh, as a graph um, a little bit more um, explicitly so we can see what's going on. I'm going to go to a different one called synth. Um, so uh, 
a powerful abstraction uh, uh, in the, the uh, setup that I use is something called mini notation, which comes from tidal cycles. But underneath the mini notation, it's setting up a graph. So let's, uh, this example I have here, um, and let me just make sure that, yeah, it's, it's showing to you right now, um, uh, shows what one of those graphs um, uh, is. So here, uh, let me play it and you'll hear this like really flangy sound is for, uh, uh, which, is, which is kind of fun. It's, it's like sort of sci-fi-y. Let me, let me amp up the volume a little bit because it's a little bit soft. Turn it to 1.5. Yeah, now it's, wah. That's sort of fun, isn't it? Um, Peer script makes, makes fun noises when, <laughs> when you ask it to. So uh, why is web audio graph? Um, uh, so uh, in a graph, there's many different types of graphs um, uh, you can make, but uh, uh, the, um, Let's let's look at how my claim is that the structure is graph-like. Uh, so it's just a claim that I'm making, but I'll, I'll dig into kind of why I'm making that claim. So um, we have a gain node here. Into the gain node is passed a bandpass filter. This bandpass filter, uh, um, which is filtering, has an argument, um, uh, uh, a couple arguments going to it. The frequency of the filter is Q value. And then what's going into it are these oscillators. Um, so these oscillators here, we have OCS. Uh, it's a reference to this part of the graph. Um, these oscillators, we have another gain node, and then going into that is a triangle wave, a sine wave, and a sine wave. So now if we're imagining the graph in our head, we have a gain node into which a bandpass filter is going and into which these oscillators are going. Interestingly, this graph is type safe. I've done type level programming to make sure it's type safe. What does type safe mean? It means that here, instead of calling my oscillators oscs, if I add like a lot of S's to it and then press play, the graph won't compile. It'll freak out um, because it can't find um, OSCs in, in there. So um, it's a graph at the type level, meaning I'm using type level graphs uh, to make sure that if it claims that it's in the graph, it actually is. And now when I fix the type, uh, the type of this record, um, the, the graph traverser is able to find that OSCs does exist in there, picks it up in the ref um, and uses it. And similarly, if I call the ref the wrong thing, if I call it OSCs with a lot of S's, it will also freak out um, because it can't find that. So let's make it unfreak out. Um, OSCS. Uh, I say freak out, sorry. Maybe it's actually quite calm. I, I don't know what Pure Script's inner life is, but anyway, it does give me a, an error. So all that is to say that in addition to being a graph, it's a type level graph, meaning it's doing type level programming in order to verify that that uh, graph is correct. Why am I using type level programming? Quite simply uh, because, uh, the, or not quite simply, type level programming is quite complex, but the, the, the answer is quite simple. Quite simply uh, because uh, I don't want the audio to fail. When I'm doing a jam session that's 20 minutes long, I don't want the graph just to like explode um, I don't want it to load into the runtime, be like a, an incoherent graph, and then for my audio to turn off and for the audience to go home and me not to get paid for the gig, I want the thing to work. And for it to work, um, we want to make sure that any invalid state, this is what James was saying before, any invalid state in Jordan as well is, is, is rejected by the compiler, not rejected by the runtime, which we saw happen there. So that's my answer to your question, James, why is web audio graph? Because my claim is that this thing that I just showed you is a graph. Um, and then uh, where is it a graph? It's a graph on the term level, meaning it's connecting all the stuff in the web audio interface, but it's also a graph on the type level to make sure the music is coherent I mean, it has no bugs. So um, uh, there, there you go. Then I'm curious what infix operators WAGS uses. Uh, uh, many uh, is the answer. So um, uh, WAGS uh, infix um, to create a scene, uh, there's at <laughs> um, uh, greater than, um, make scene flipped. Uh, there, there's lots of infix operators, and uh, they're used all over uh, all over WAGS, but also all over the um, the, the unit tests as well. Um, so, uh, sorry about the uh, the baby crying in the background. If you can hear it, or um, uh, I'm not sorry about the baby, but it's, sorry, sorry about the crying. Uh, so here's one of uh, the uh, actually no, this is not a WAGS infix operator, but this is. Um, so this is a WAGS infix operator um, that's that's being being used. Um, so uh, to find them, you, you could uh, look in the package um, and they're used all over the place. Uh, in uh, WAGSY, um, which is the, um, or sorry, in PureScript WAGS lib, uh, which is this library, um, infix operators are used in the engine that powers WAGSY. So that engine uh, is, I call it the tile engine. It's like a, it's a front end um, for uh, or middleware. Um, uh, it's, it's a, uh, these infix operators are used. Actually, I'm not sure they're not even used in, in here. And this engine, they're used in the functions like constructed, which which are um, 
uh, you used uh, elsewhere. Anyway, all that is to say is that uh, at some level, using working within fixed operators is, is useful. Um, then uh, I've used Comanus to iterate a game of life simulation. Stepping is redecorating the grid tree. Yes, absolutely, Joseph. Uh, that, that's absolutely true. That um, uh, that that uh, is. Uh, I think that, that um, Bartas talks about that in his blog, uh, Conway's Game of Life, uh, and that is a way to use re redecoration um, in in that context. Sort of, it, it's uh, it's almost a, linguistically it doesn't roll off the tongue, but you're rewriting the future, but the future hasn't been written yet, and yet you're rewriting. It's really what you're doing is you're rewriting the potentialities of the future, which like sort of a beautiful metaphor when you think about it. Like if you send a kid to school, it's because you want to rewrite their potentialities. You want to create a better potential for them. Uh, so you can rewrite the future insofar as you can rewrite its potential, and that's what redecoration is doing um, in, in, in the case of a common app. Um, so then in extract W A to A is a web audiograph. Yes, um, that, that, that is exactly what it is. Uh, with W A to A is a web audiograph and everything inside of it. So there's the web audiograph um, has control data in it. That control data is also co-monads, um, uh, which in itself contains control data, which is also co-monads. And then when extract is called, it just goes all the way down the chain and extracts what uh, you need. Why am I composing co-monads together? So that uh, BYOC, bring your own co-monad, meaning that instead of locking folks into using um, one particular abstraction, it, it takes an arbitrary uh, set of co-monads um, and then just calls extract in all of them. And the reason it's able to do it is because of the type class. So you just, just expects a co-monad and, and the one that you bring is, is, is your co-monad of, of the day or the week, um, but, but it uses them under the hood to, uh, to, to, to power wags. Um, it reminds me of, of craft work. Um, it's cool that it updates without having to stop music. A absolutely, like it, 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 uh, um, uh, if it had to stop, it, it, would, it would be a non-starter for, uh, for gigging musicians that, that are using it in a live performance context. So that was very important to me. And it's, it's important to the folks that use it as well. Uh, can you generate a wax document from a, a physical synthesizer? Um, yes, absolutely. The, the way that I generated um, the, the Bach example was a physical uh, synthesizer. I, um, uh, I have a piano here um, and uh, I, I uh, use it to generate MIDI um, and then use a Python package called Mido to parse the MIDI. Um, uh, although you could also, you don't even need to parse the MIDI uh, post factory, you could also parse it in real time. Um, I, on my Twitter feed, there's examples of me playing MIDI instruments um, that, that are powered by the browser. And that's absolutely possible. It's fast and the reactivity of it is sub 15 milliseconds, um, which is what you need to hear to feel like it, uh, it, it actually works in time. Um, then are you representing the graphs with a pure script graph library? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm representing it with a, um, a custom a uh, graph maker um, that is in the WAGS source tree. Um, and it is, uh, the graph is represented um, uh, by a bunch of, uh, so if I go to um, this graph folder, um, so all of these audio units, uh, like a uh, high shell filter, high pass filter, gain filter, these are units in the graph. Um, and then each one, basically the record contains a bunch of keys that point to these. Um, uh, so as a result, the, the type of the graph uh, will change depending on what's inside of it, which is why I use type level programming. If it were one, um, you could also do it on the term level, uh, but by doing it on the term level, you, use, you lose the benefits of the compiler being able to check that the graph um, is coherent. So, so these are the elements that, that make up the web. Audio graph. Um, oh, yeah, screen sharing is stop. Stop. Sorry about that. Um, uh, I will let me go back uh, to it um, really quick. Yeah, I was talking about this. Sorry. Uh, um, the uh, th These are the uh, uh, elements um, uh, of the graph, which, which is in WAGS graph audio units. Uh, um, sorry about that. Uh, lost track of where it was. Can I show the max potential? Uh, does, uh, sorry, um, does the graph update happen officially due to co-monads or something else? Completely due to co-monads. Like th th that is the uh, only way that it happens efficiently. And I'll show the part of the code um, where that is because it's, it's, and I will turn on my screen share for that because it's, it's super important to insist on that that efficiency comes from the underlying um, abstraction uh, and it's here. So, um, and it's not like spread over a lot of places either. It's, it's, it's a one-stop shop for that efficiency, which is, uh, which is nice because it makes it, um, uh, really easy to to reason about when when you're hacking at the library. So it's here, control functions, uh, and it is make scene, which makes the next scene. So make scene. Um, 
uh, what it does is it gets a frame with the environment, get, get frame. Uh, th this, is, um, this is the thing that ejects the next value. And then um, what we do uh, when we get the frame um, is we pass, so we, we get the next frame, we say what the instructions are. These are the instructions going to the web audio graph, like turn up the gain or start oscillator node or da, da, da. And then we pass the next thing and next is, a wag, and then we could call make, make scene on next and get that. So uh, the efficiency completely make scene is the function that's called. When I say that, it just calls comonads all the way down. It's 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 make scene that does it, and uh, all of the efficiencies just come from the fact that we call it once, get the instructions, and then we have next, which is a closure around what happens next um, in the future. So it, yeah, all one hundred percent of the efficiency comes from the uh, comonadic implementation. Um, and, and the genius of the people that, that invented uh, the way to work with that in Haskell. Um, I know that Ed, uh, Edward Kmet worked a lot with it. Um, a lot of other folks did, did too. Um, and it's the, the idea, the pattern is, is brilliant and I'm making uh, ample use of it. So um, can I show the, off the max potential of this line of work for musicians that normal DAWs and sound engineering can't do? Um, yes, absolutely. So I actually just created a Udemy course um, that, is, that is not live yet, uh, but, but uh, imminently will be. Um, uh, so here, if I go to, um, I have way too many Google profiles. Uh, if I go to udemy.com, uh, hopefully this will take it to my instructors. Uh, yeah, crap, no, it's not there. Um, but but uh, yeah, so my answer to you is, is uh, yes. Uh, otherwise I would do a screen share, um, but it's not up yet. So uh, the max potential of this, I do a full course um, that could show that, but like as, as, a, um, as a simple sort of, or opening salvo to that, um, like here's one example uh, from from it that takes a that takes a single file. Um, th this file here. Let me click on it. Call your group. I take it and I do this. Sorry, it's taking a while to load. Not sure why. Maybe because Audion is messing around with it. Yeah, let me reload. For some reason, it's a uh, could be this uh, could be this thing that I just installed uh, that it's not happy about. Um, anyway, it's it's a uh, it's taking a while to load, but but hopefully uh, it'll it'll work okay. Um, anyway, uh, theoretically, when it starts, uh, it, it'll yeah. I, I have no clue why it's crapping out like that. Let, let me switch to Safari. Um, maybe Safari will be kinder to me. Uh, maybe it's that um, the thing that I just installed. So uh, anyway, uh, this is all the max potential question. Um, you hear it remixes it. And it does that just with this homonetic structure. So there you go. I mean, it, it's, sorry, let me. Turn, turn that off. Um, so it, it's entirely, yeah, I mean, I, I do a whole course where I talk about it, but it can push music creation really far. And one of the reasons that I created it was to, to be able to create music in a way that, that, that I hadn't done before. Um, and I found a lot of pleasure in doing that and collaborating with others about it. Um, and then la last question I see in here, to touch on an earlier question, RX observables are an, thank you, uh, are an example of monads, but not comonads, but they can be used to make a comonad. Um, I actually don't know enough about, um, RX observables, unfortunately, to be able to to to, uh, to say, but um, one thing is for sure: uh, if a RX observable can potentially not contain a value, um, if, if that is part of the contract, then it can't be a comonad because comonads that need to be able to pay up on demand that you ask for the value and, and you get it. Um, so if an observable, uh, I think observables are the analog in the pure world <laughs> would be events, um, and an event is the same. A event uh, can't be a monad because it's, it's very uh, the same reason that um, numbers, you wouldn't make it a monoid because there's no uh, natural monoidic operator. You can make um, multiplication, addition, uh, could both be it. So it's sort of, I mean, you don't know which one to choose. And events are the same way that events are dealing with time. Time is their context. So how you squish together time can be done in a, in a myriad of ways. And there's sort of no uh, consensus on the way to do it. Um, so as a result, event is not a monad, uh, but there are many monadic operations you can do 
uh, with an event. And I'm pretty sure observables work in the same way. They're sort of like events. So because an event um, could never be fired and an observable uh, theoretically can never be fired either. So in that way, it could be monadic, uh, but not co-monadic. Uh, uh, um, uh, okay, answering an earlier question on components. Uh, but yeah, they could be, ah, okay, you're answering the question, sorry. Yeah, so so your answer is um, uh, absolutely correct. And thanks Robert Robert for that. So th yeah, uh, one one thing to say, maybe that's useful is that it's possible to have uh, monads that are also co-monads, but they're sort of a bit, um, I, I don't want, well, I'll use the word trivial. I mean, they're like, the, theoretically they're not trivial at all, but they just don't get you a lot of power um, when you're using them. So identity, it's sort of the classic example. Identity, you could always extract the value out of and identity can be a, a trivial monad as well. Um, but where stuff gets interesting uh, with monads and comonads is kind of when they kind of specialize into their own spheres. Um, so comonads uh, are great for anything that's front endy where you need to be able to abstract the value and project into a future. And uh, monads are great uh, for when stuff can hit the fan, like parsing. I don't know, could could fail in all sorts of ways. Um, and it's it's managing sort of the uncertainty of failure all the time. Uh, and you sort of need a monad uh, to to be able to do that in the abstraction. Uh, 